Welcome to the Greg Software Incorporated Ceramic Tile Program for the National Tile Contractors Association. In this video, you will learn how to complete a takeoff, input the information into the NTCA pricing program provided by Greg Software. This is a very powerful program that will teach cash flow at estimate time and ensure that you know your company's profits. Before we start, let's look at a handwritten takeoff and estimate on a column or sheet. The room names are listed on the left side coming down the page. The materials are listed across the top. Floor, base, base corners, wall tile, wall accent, bullnose, and so on. The quantities are written out and require manual calculating. This example shows the items across the sheet with the measurements down the sheet where they are then used to figure out the pricing. The NTCA program functions the same way except the material items go down the sheet instead of across the sheet. The first two minutes of this video were to show you how to enter the information either directly into the program on the computer or writing it on the takeoff sheet where you can then go back to your office and enter it into the computer. Either way, the entries are the same. We're starting with the instruction takeoff page example. In the first column, we list the materials for the project going down the page. They can be listed room by room or generically as the first eight items are listed. Room by room gives you an automated breakout per room with a lump sum total all at the same time on the pricing summary page. The user can go to a job site or plan room and fill out the takeoff in the same format as the takeoff page to enter entered into the computer, but if the user has a laptop, the takeoff can be entered directly into the computer at the location, saving the transfer time. In this example, the material list shows that item number one is floor tile and item number two is waterproofing, so on down the list. The program will know what each material is by the item number. The first room name is typical room, and the first material is number one for the floor tile. We've placed an S for sealer, and then the multiplication requires are three numbers, units times length times width or height. A cut piece count can be kept to help in obtaining extra labor for cutting. The first item is one room times 20 feet times 10 feet wide. There are multiple measurements to obtain the area place another line and list them. For example, the next item waterproofing is material number two. We have one unit times 20 feet times 10 to represent the floor, but this waterproofing turns up the wall. So we will add one more line item of material number two, one unit times 60 lineal feet times six inches up the wall. You can continue with all items to list in the room and go to the next room. Let's do a simple takeoff and enter it into the pricing program. I have entered an example we can review on our takeoff sheet. To the right we have an area 10 foot by 20 foot. The material list we have floor tile, we have base tile, we have wall, we have accent tile, and a threshold. The takeoff shows that we wrote material one floor tile item number one at one unit with a sealer 20 foot by 10 foot. The base item is material number two, one unit 57 foot times one. That would be 60 lineal feet less a three foot doorway. Now we have material number three, wall tile, one unit times 57 feet times seven feet high. Material number four, the accent stripe, one unit 57 feet times one foot. And the last item, we have material number five, a threshold, one unit, one times one, equals one threshold. If we did not enter that directly into the computer and we use the takeoff sheet at a job site, then we will need to enter these totals into the computer when we return to our office. Once the material list with pricing is placed at the top of the bid summary page, then all we are going to do is copy the room information over from the takeoff sheet to the computer takeoff page to get all the calculations correct. We're now looking at the pricing program that's pulled up on the computer. I've typed in the five materials material line item with a price. Material 1 floor tile, material 2 base, material 3 wall tile, material 4 wall accent, and material 5 threshold. We're going to move over to the left, which is the takeoff page, and I'm going to move it over so that we can see the manual sheet that we entered into. This is going to be the typical room name. All I do is transfer these numbers. Material 1, floor tile, 8 by 8 dial 1500. I have a sealer. I have one unit, 20 foot by 10 foot. Material 2, I have one length, 57 foot by one. As I enter the material code, the description comes up over on the left, and all I have to do is type in, copy the numbers from the takeoff sheet. Remember, we can enter these numbers directly in as we're taking the job off. We've duplicated this sheet. Let's look at our pricing program now. Our footages are in. As I move the program over, I now have the total quantities. I have a unit value with a total value for each line item. These two columns right here 
are the most important columns. It is a furnish and install unit price and value of everything that I figure as I go. As you start to finish the pricing, we start at the top of this bid page and we work our way down, verifying that everything that has a quantity has a price. On the left side of the sheet, we have a set and grout cost for the line items that require set and grout. We have a material value. The quantities have come over from the takeoff page. This yellow column here is a waste factor. We have two waste factors we can use at any time, a C, R, and IT. The C items get the top waste factor and the IT items get the bottom. We can change those at any time. They can be listed accordingly. As we go down this page, the next area is sales tax area. We have 9% listed. $1,589 plus 9% sales tax giving us a total material cost. The next area is area number two, labor for the project. Labor can be done three different ways if needed. The first yellow column is a lump sum column for each line item. The second column is a piecework or unit price column. Two dollars a foot, one dollar a foot, whatever you need. The third column across the sheet for a total of seven are for production rates and crew sizes. On this example we're going to put in production rate. When you enter production rates it gives you mechanic or helper day plus a unit price. This particular project was running a dollar fifty seven a foot. If I can do two hundred feet a day for a mechanic and helper. We'll complete the last few items to obtain the labor for this job. The user can select miscellaneous line items like truck trips, project manager, parking, field measuring, whatever the case may be, as we go. Area number three, profit and overhead and expenses. We have listed a 15% overhead and a 10% profit. We also can break materials and labor out separately. We put profit back on overhead, so we end up with a 26.5% total profit on the project. The last item is travel expenses if needed to complete the bid. We can mark them up separately if desired. We can either put in an expense lump sum, or we can figure how many miles to and from the job, how many number of men or trips and how much a mile are we going to pay. If we have days for room and board, we can put in a number for hotel expenses. We can also mark up those expenses if needed. Our total bid right now is $3,747.97. First, we will go back to the top of the bid page and verify the unit pricing. We have $587 a foot for floor tile, $955 on base, $428 on wall tile, $549 on the wall accent, and $801 on the threshold. Let's look at the account blue area. Every material line item is broken out with a value plus the waste factor so you will know exactly what the invoicing should be from the vendor. Our job site labor and payroll tax burden is broken out in the event that you have separated your hourly rate and payroll tax. We have a total material and a total labor, burden, thin set and grout cost, sales tax, truck trips, our overhead and our profit. We've got a $3,747 job. If we were asked to cut our bid, would you take the job for $35? I would say no. I would have to look at my profit. First of all, overhead and profit should be broken out. Overhead is an item that is required for you to stay in business. You can't cut overhead. That's your paycheck and maybe the employees in your office. The profit associated with this job was $340. If I cut $240 off this bid to take it for $3,500, I would end up with $100 left to do this whole project. On this bid, we had a 10% profit plus overhead profit equaling 11.5%. Notice the retainage for this project for a commercial contractor would be $374. It's $34 more than your actual profit. The profit was a markup, but the retainage is more in line with a margin. You actually have to take money out of your pocket to do the project while they are holding your retainage. This program is easy to use. If you have any questions, call Greg Software at 713-854-4489.